Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon has dismissed rumours that privatisation is on the cards for ESCOM. He was delivering ESCOM's special paper detailing plans to restructure the struggling state-owned power utility. Gordon confirmed that government would be separating the entity's uh, transmission, generation and distribution components to become subsidiaries of ESCOM Holdings. He insisted that there was a future for ESCOM. To talk about the restructuring plan, we join now by Professor by Professor Hartmut Winkler from the University of Johannesburg. A very good evening to you, Professor, and thank you so much for joining us. He joins us via Skype. Oh, good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. So let's firstly start with this um, issue about privatization, the minister reiterating it, the RAND weakening at the same time. Is there a link? Um, I don't know if it would have been politically feasible to push through a, a privatized ESCOM at this stage. Uh, it doesn't entirely surprise me. And uh, also, given the fact that at the moment ESCOM is still a monopoly, uh, it, uh, privatizing something like that means that it, 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 essentially your entire electricity production and system is in the hands of, of one particular entity. There is an argument to be made that that should stay in state hands. So um, the counter argument is that uh, private entities often do work much more effectively. But I think in the short term, at least, uh, I think they're not going to privatize. They're going to leave it as is. So it doesn't surprise me. Uh, and just in terms of investors, would they be d disappointed by this? Perhaps, but uh, I think one of the reasons also why they're pushing for this transmission company, uh, the transmission uh, section of Eskom is the one which is uh, sustainable as it is now. Uh, so this is something where private, where, where, uh, uh, private investors would probably be interested in investing in. Whereas the other section, that you've got the generation section, which is, is at the moment sitting with all these uh, power stations, which are uh, just breaking down every uh, and, and responsible for the load shedding, and the distribution section, which is responsible for uh, selling electricity to municipalities and, and are just not getting paid. Those are the, the, the two uh, sections of ESKIM which are on very shaky ground. The transmission section, which essentially owns all the, uh, the power lines connecting the different uh, power stations to the end consumer that is seen as, as, as a even right now as a viable entity so it, it, i think that's always been one of the reasons why they've wanted to separate these at least it provides one entity this transmission uh, uh, company uh, into it, it something solid that uh, they hope that uh, somebody will invest in hmm. i mean just looking at some of the comments uh, some are saying that the market is uh, largely pleased with the plan but they're disappointed with the transmission system operator so how do you move forward from there yeah, I, I, I'm not. I, I haven't read those particular comments. So I'm not quite sure what exactly the, the the criticism is about, other than perhaps that they were hoping that the, the whole section was going to be sold. But uh, at the moment, uh, especially with the the, the the governing party being in an alliance with Kosatu and 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 uh, them being extremely strong on this whole issue of privatisation, uh, I, I couldn't really see something. Uh, uh, to that nature happening right now. So this is something which can be made to work, whether it's the best system or not, we'll see. Uh, I suspect we are going to be continuing having this discussion about privatization or not in the future, but at least it is a, it is a major step forward. Okay, so let's talk about the proposed reforms overall. Are you confident that what they set out to achieve will be with this plan? Some have said um, it's a, a very big, good beginning first step, uh, that ESCOM shall be characterized by, for instance, uh, optimized operations, restructured finance, finances and a sustainable business model. Is that evident in all of this, including being an environmentally responsive electricity system? Yes, Eskom is sitting in an exceptionally difficult situation. Now, their debt of, what, $440 billion, there, there is really no such thing as a good way out of this. So uh, uh, what they've done is certainly what they could do. Uh, they're looking at things at, 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 um, at costs, for example, the coal contracts. There are some which are regarded as being too high. Uh, they're looking at the independent power producers, uh, where, again, some of the contracts are, are very high. Uh, or at a high cost and uh, looking at whether they can cut costs here and there. Uh, but that alone is not going to solve the problem. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the mini budget tomorrow is going to deal with, 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 with this, uh, this uh, debt burden. Um, 
Yes, uh, but as far as the plan is concerned, yes, they're looking at more leadership. Yes, they're looking at skills. It, it's all the right words, but uh, nobody should fool themselves into believing that this is going to be uh, the silver bullet, which is going to cure Eskom. There's a lot more work ahead, and going, there's going to be a lot more problems ahead as well. But at least uh, they are trying something, and it, it's, it'd be difficult to suggest much that they could that could have been done better mm. at this stage. Let's look at some of the work that has to be done, the distribution function. Uh, there clearly is more talking or more planning that needs to be done, especially with the municipalities' reliance mm. on electricity sales. What is missing from what's been previously envisaged? Yeah, I, it, again, it, it, that's certainly not going to be fixed easily. Uh, if you look at what some of the municipalities uh, owe, uh, uh, we uh, just looked at this uh, amount of so Soweto, for example, owes, and that's something like 19 billion. And uh, one of the free state municipalities owing 4 billion or so. Uh, that's clearly not something which is going to be uh, changed overnight. Um, they're looking at, uh, I think that's also why there's been this emphasis on trying to provide cheaper electricity where possible, uh, in, in the hope that that is going to then. Uh, it, it, Act as an incentive for, for, for municipalities to, to get their their purchases and and, and, and the electricity supply in order, but it's uh, it's certainly the distribution part might actually be one of the most difficult ones to handle. You mentioned earlier on the ministers uh, talking of. Uh monopolies and by their very nature some would say they are self-interested so if you're mooting competition how can you do that if you're looking inwards yes well one of the interesting points i saw in this plan was that uh, they were suggesting that apart from this transmission company eskim could set up two or more uh, generation companies internally uh, so what that might be for uh, just as an example they could set up a, 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 a a subsidiary of Eskom that deals entirely with, say, Medupi power station. Uh, how exactly they plan to do it, whether they uh, intend to regionalize this or whether, uh, whether they, they intend to break it up according to, to whether it's coal or renewables or whatever, that we'll still have to see. But the idea is that uh, if, the in the, uh, if the power stations are run as independent entities, it will be much easier to hold somebody to account if they are simply not uh, uh, losing uh, too much uh, money. It will then be up to the individual power station to try and secure uh, the, the, the best, uh, as in the case of coal, uh, coal supplies uh, and, 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 and to, uh, to sell the thing at a proper price. So at the moment, it's very difficult to actually... Uh, work out where the losses are. When something goes wrong at Eskom, the public is left for days trying to figure out where exactly uh, uh, things have gone wrong. This has got to change as well. So there are a whole lot of things uh, like that where they can improve. Uh, transparency is also mentioned in this plan. But we really need to know exactly that if there is a problem somewhere at Eskom, if, if there's been a problem with a distributor belt at Medupi, as was uh, the case in the last load shedding, uh, that the public knows immediately what what, what is happening. Uh, Eskom can no longer be run uh, like some sort of secretive state agency is uh, uh, and that's what was happening in the, in the 1980s during the state of emergency. In many respects, Eskom is still uh, running in the same way. They need to uh, be much more open. They need to take the public into their confidence. And I, I think then yeah. the public will, public will also be far more understanding of the challenges that they face. Professor, thank you very much for your time. Professor Hartmut Winkler, he is from the University of Johannesburg.